now that we have the areas selected, let's set up for survey scans to identify the major elements. To enter the survey menu to set up for a survey, we hold the shift key down and strike function key number five. That then allows us to choose either previous settings, define new settings, or if we had a survey scan stored on the data disk, we could pull that file name up and it would then assume the parameters which we use to take that file. What we want to do is set up new survey scan parameters. So we'll toggle to new using function key number one. And then we will enter. That now allows us to fill in the rest of the analyzer parameters for collecting the survey scan. Since we're not sure what this material is, what we would like to do is take a survey scan using a lower limit of 30. We then would like the upper limit to be at least 2,000. If there are any major peaks above 2,000, we would like to know if they are present also. So let's make it an upper limit of 2,050. Typically, what we use is one EV per step. The time per step is already entered. That we set up in the semi-perm commands. We will be using 15 milliseconds per step. Line number five asks us how much acquisition time we wish to spend per area in minutes. We are looking at three areas. So if we spend 10 minutes per area, it will take a total data acquisition time of 30 minutes. Notice that when we type in the time per area, automatically it calculates the number of cycles it will take to go that amount of time. We typed in 10 minutes, and it says 19 cycles. If we were to change that to five minutes, it updates to nine cycles. Again, we wish on this sample to spend 10 minutes per area, which then would be a total of 19 cycles. Line number six asks us what analysis area we wish to do. We can do a full analysis area. What that would do is raster at TV rate over the area at whatever magnification we have set up on the TV. It would then signal average that area, and our survey scan would be, in essence, from one area, and that would be the magnification which is displayed on the TV. What we want is selected areas because we have three different areas that we want, and we have already defined those areas. So we will leave that in the selected areas mode. Line seven asks where we would like to calculate our EMS routine. Right now, we have our EMS routine on one point. That means that it will set up the OJ multiplier while looking at area number one. We could also have it set up the multiplier while scanning at TV rate over the whole sample. That would be toggling number seven to sample mode. Since I know that area number one has a high OJ yield, I will allow the multiplier to set up in the one point mode, and that should assure that we do not saturate the multiplier. Once we have these parameters set up, we can exit the survey setup mode by using soft key number eight. Before we actually acquire the survey scans, we should go back to the TV image make sure that it is in focus, and that we have the proper registration with the mark which we made on the TV screen. What we'll do is we will enter the SEM menu, which will then allow us to access the image shift, which is function key number three. Using the arrows, we can then shift 
the sample back into the proper position with the registration mark which we have made on the TV. Once we have that lined up, we can then also use the fine focus to make sure that we have the best focus possible. Now that the sample is focused and registered properly, we can exit the SEM menu using soft key number eight, and we can begin our acquisition. To demonstrate the acquisition, we have the SEM image where the areas will appear in the upper corner of the screen. We can now begin the survey scan. We no longer have to use the shift and function key number five in order to enter the survey scan menu that we already have set up. So we can just press function key number five and it will begin the survey acquisition. Right now it is calculating the correct multiplier voltage going through the EMS routine. We now see on the TV point number one where this acquisition is being acquired. We also notice that on the computer terminal it says area number one. Present cycle is cycle number one for area number one. Out of a total of 19 cycles and three areas. Notice now on the TV we have gone to area number two. Also on the terminal we see area number two and also the indication of area number two over here. A cycle is looking at area number one, area number two, and area number three sequentially. That constitutes one cycle. On the TV, we now see that we are acquiring from area number three. And again, that is also indicated on our graph. This will now complete cycle number one. We are signal averaging on all three areas. We now go back to area number one, as we see on the TV, and as is indicated on the graph. And we are now presently on cycle number two out of a total of 19 cycles. The soft keys, which we could select at this time, soft key number one would allow us to go into the background and manipulate any data that is on the data disk. Soft key number two would stop at the end of the cycle. The command is cycle stop. If we were to press that now, it would stop at the end of cycle number two after looking at area one two, and three. Again, the three areas constitute one cycle. Soft key number seven is labeled suspend acquisition. If we wanted to momentarily stop the acquisition, maybe re-register on the TV image, and then return to the acquisition, we would use soft key number seven to temporarily suspend the acquisition. And soft key number eight would interrupt and completely abort the acquisition.
we are now on area number two, cycle number three. We can also see that the file name for the survey scans will be MWT102. Remember that when we set up our file naming, the first acquisition that we actually acquired and stored on the disk was our SEM image, and that was stored under MWT101. So we are sequencing in order, the survey scans being our second set of data that we are acquiring and storing on the data disk for this particular sample and it will be stored under file name MWT102. At this point just about 30 minutes has elapsed. We see that we are on presently cycle number 18 out of 19 cycles. We are now monitoring area three, as you can see both on the graph and on the TV image. We are now beginning our final cycle. And this will now be the last sweep. We are on area number three and cycle number 19. When the acquisition is complete, we notice two things. On the TV, we no longer see an indication of any of the areas, area one, two, or three. And we also see on the terminal that we have returned to the home bank. Now that the data acquisition is complete, we need to display those survey scans and determine what major elements are present on areas one, two, and three. To do that, we can use function key number 16 that will display our last acquisition, which was our survey scans. In pressing function key 16, we now enter the survey display menu. We see that the file is MWT102, which is our survey scans. Function key number two allows us then to enter the area which we wished to display. Let's take a look at area number one. Now by pressing soft key number one, it will automatically display area number one. Now that we have area number one displayed, our soft keys take on different functions. Soft key number two would allow us to display add full. We could display add another area on top of this area, full scale. Soft key number three would allow us to display add another survey scan to this survey scan. We're 
appropriate would automatically be scaled in relation to this survey scan. Soft key number five would allow us to enter the data massage banks. And soft key number seven would allow us to return to the load menu where we could load any other files that are stored on the data disk. What we would like to do is differentiate and smooth this survey scan so that we can identify the major elements present on area number one. To do that, we will press soft key number five and enter the data massage bank. These are the functions which we could now utilize. What I would like to do is differentiate. It is not on this bank. You can define several massage banks. This is only one of the banks. So what we can do is press function key number 23, which will take us to the next data massage bank. Notice the next bank has different functions. I still do not see a differentiate key, so I will go to the next bank. Now we see that soft key number seven will allow us to differentiate. If I press differentiate, it will automatically differentiate a given number which was entered into the semi-permanent commands. If I'm not sure what that number is and would like to know that number or change that number, I can use the shift key. So I will hold the shift key and press soft key number seven. It then allows me the endpoint differentiate is a five point differentiation. I would like to change that to a nine point so I can enter nine at this time. So I will type nine and enter. Notice that the valid parameters are odd numbers between three and 25 that is located down at the lower left portion of the screen. Notice now that again my soft keys have changed and now I can either exit the differentiate mode or I can execute the differentiation of a nine point by pressing soft key number one. We are now doing a, now a nine point differentiation. We can see that the signal to noise is quite good using a nine point differentiation, so we do not need to at this point utilize the smooth routine. We can now exit using soft key number eight. We are now back into the data massage banks. What I would like to do is utilize the cursor in order to identify this major peak located at the lower part of the kinetic energy scale and identify the high energy peak. Knowing the energies, we can then compare them with energies in the handbook and determine what element is present. Let's go to the next bank because I do not have the cursor soft key here. So again, we will press function key number 23. We are now at a, another bank by pressing soft key 23 again. We now come to a bank which allows me to utilize the cursor routine. Cursor is now soft key number five, so I will press soft key number five. In the cursor mode, Soft key number two allows me to pick the minimum value located on the screen. Soft key number three allows me to pick the maximum value. And again, soft key number eight will allow me to exit. Near the top of the screen, we see that the energy at which the cursor 
is located right now is an energy of 1,040. And it also tell, tells me the number of counts in that channel. What I would like to do is determine the energy of the negative most excursion of this peak down near 30 electron volts. Since that is the minimum value on the screen, I could utilize soft key number two for minimum value. The cursor has now moved and lined up with that peak, and it tells me that the energy of that peak is 73. With that in mind, I now want to identify the energy of the high energy peak, which is located up near 2050. What I can do is slew the cursor, and again, using the shift key, I can slew the cursor fast. Or I could type in a value. Since I know that the energy is near 2050, I can type in the value 2050 into the energy. By enter, we now very quickly move the cursor up to the energy 2050. And we can then slew the cursor to the negative excursion of that peak. We can determine the negative excursion of the peak by looking at the counts and minimizing them. Right now we have 490,000 counts in the channel. By slewing up, I can go to 475,000, 464,000, 456,000, 455,000, and now I start going back up to 457,000. So I know the negative excursion is at 455,000, and the energy of that peak is 2,022. By now going to the handbook, I could match up the high energy and low energy and determine that all of the peaks represented on this graph belong to gold. Now that we have identified the elements on area number one, we can exit the cursor mode. And we now want to redisplay area number two. To get back into the survey display mode, we utilize function key number 15, which is display and load key, the display being activated by holding down the shift key. So I will hold shift and then press function key 15. And that should bring me back to the survey display menu. Again, we are looking at area number one. What I would like is area number two. So I will press function key number two, which allows me now to change the area number I would like to enter area number two, so I will type two and enter. Again, I can display add to this graph, but what I would like is to look at only area number two so that I do not get mixed up as to the peaks. So I will again press soft key number one. We are now looking at the raw data, or the N of E data, for area number two. Again, we want to differentiate, so we will press soft key number five to enter the data massage. Again, function key number 23 will take me to the next bank. Next bank, pressing function key number 23 again. I can now differentiate, again, shift and soft key number seven will tell me the endpoint differentiation. We have now changed that to nine, which is what I would like to utilize. Again, to start the differentiation, we now press soft key number one, and we will do a nine point differentiation on area number two.
we see the noise level is a little bit higher here. So what we could do is smooth this graph. Let's exit the differentiate mode. We can, for the endpoints for smooth, again, we do not know what endpoint it will use. So again, we will use the shift key and press soft key number eight. Endpoint for smooth is five. Let's change that to nine and enter. And then to activate the smooth, we press soft key number one. So for this graph, we have done a nine-point differentiation and now a nine-point smooth. That will be displayed on the left side of the screen. We see that it says diff nine and smooth nine, so we know what functions we have applied to this graph. We can now exit the smooth routine using soft key number eight. And let's again use the cursor to identify the negative excursions of these peaks to find out what energy they are, they are at. Again, we have to go to another bank, so we will press function key 23 to go to the next bank. Once again, pressing function key 23 takes us to the next bank. We now have a cursor soft key, which is soft key number five. Pressing that allows us again to enter the cursor mode. Let's identify the minimum excursion by pressing soft key number two for minimum value. That peak energy is 1678. Looking in the handbook, we can identify that as tantalum. Tantalum shows us that this peak at 1678 is its major peak. It also has other peaks. The peak above 1678 is a tantalum peak. These peaks are also tantalum peaks, the peaks before 1678. And the peak below 230 is also a tantalum peak. Eliminating those, we still have three major peaks which we need to identify as elements other than tantalum. We have one around 500, so let's change our energy by entering the value of 500. That will then move the cursor close to the negative excursion of this peak, again by then using the arrow keys and moving the cursor and watching the counts, we want to now find the negative excursion of that peak, 192,000 counts, 174, 159, 149, 146, and 148. So we see that at 146 is the negative excursion of that peak with an energy of 512. Again, referring to the handbook, we can identify that as the oxygen peak. We now want to identify this peak by finding its negative excursion. Again, 183,000, 178, 174, 170, 164, 154, 139, 123, 109, 102, and 108. So 102,000 is the negative excursion of this peak at an energy of 383. Again, using the handbook, we can identify that as a nitrogen peak. The last major peak which we need to identify, because the peak to the left of the nitrogen peak can be identified as a tantalum peak, but we have one more peak left. So we will again find the negative excursion. 
and we find that to be at 191,000 counts, an energy of 272, which turns out to be a carbon peak. We have now identified all of the peaks which we see on this graph as tantalum being the major element with a small amount of carbon, some nitrogen, and oxygen also being present. We are now ready to look at the graph from area number three. So let's exit the cursor mode using soft key number eight. We now want to again get back to the survey menu by pressing shift and function key number 15 will allow us to enter the survey display menu. We now want to look at area number three. So we press function key number two, type in area three, and soft key number one will then allow us to display area number three. Soft key number five allows us to enter data massage. Function key 23 allows us to go to the next massage bank. Pressing it again, the next massage bank. We can now differentiate. Again, shift soft key number seven would allow us to enter the endpoint differentiation. We know now that it is set at nine, so we can press soft key number seven and it will automatically use the nine point differentiation. Once again we want to identify the energy of the negative excursion of these peaks. We will use the cursor, which again we will press function key 23 to get to the next soft key bank. Once again pressing it to the next soft key bank, which allows us then to utilize soft key number five, entering the cursor mode. We want the minimum value will be the negative excursion of this peak, which is 506. Looking in the handbook, we see that that is identified as the oxygen peak. We then want the high energy located at around 1600. So let's type in 1600 so that the cursor will be quickly moved to that area. We can now minimize the counts. The negative excursion counts is 105,000. The energy is at 1608. Again, looking at the handbook, we can identify that as a silicon peak in the oxide form, which also has a low energy peak, which we can identify down here at an energy of about 78 electron volts. Again, we can now exit now that we have identified all of the elements present. Pressing soft key number eight will exit the cursor mode. Let's again return to the survey display menu using the shift key and function key 15. We have now displayed all three areas and identified the major peaks. Area number one was gold. Area number two was tantalum with some carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And area number three is silicon oxide. 
we could also display all three of them on the same graph in the N of E mode. The easiest way to do that is to use function key number two, which allows us now to change the area. Notice we can also toggle by pressing soft key number two once more to all areas. And when we ask to display, we will see all three areas displayed on the same graph. Remember in the semi-permanent commands, we set up a color scheme for the graph, red being our first element being displayed, green will be area number two, and blue will represent area number three. We now see in the N of E mode the survey scan from area number one, which is gold. Displayed in green is the survey scan from area number two, which is our tantalum signal. And in blue is the survey scan from area number three, our silicon oxide. Before we finish with the survey section, I would like to demonstrate full area survey scan. We had set up on selected areas, and I would like to demonstrate what happens when we select full areas. To do that, we can exit this mode by pressing soft key number eight. We can also erase the screen or clear the screen by pressing the control key, which is located at the far left of the keyboard, and the clear key simultaneously, which is located at the far right of the, of the keyboard. That will then clear the screen, which makes it easier for us when we enter a menu to see all of the parameters. We now want to enter the survey menu, so we hold the shift key down and press function key number five. What we would like to do is utilize our previous settings, which we used for the survey scans, which we just acquired. So we will hit the enter. We now see all of our previous parameters, lower limit of 30, upper limit of 2050, one volt per step, 10 minutes per area. What I would like to demonstrate is the analysis area. We used the selected areas, which looked at area one, two, and three. If we wanted a survey scan, which represented an average of the area which we were scanning on the TV, we would ask for analysis area full. To do that, we press function key six and toggle it to full. Once we have full area selected, we could go directly to acquire by pressing soft key number one. Before we do that, let's look at the TV image and see what happens. We are now looking at a 5000x area where we did the selected areas, area one being on this pad, which we found out to be gold, area two on this bar, which we found to be tantalum, and area three in between, which we found to be silicon oxide. Again, if we wanted an average over this area, we select full analysis, and I will now press soft key number one for acquire, and we see that the image drops to a lower magnification on the TV, and when we begin acquisition, the area at 5000x located within this lower magnification area will now be scanned at TV rate and will give us an average survey scan. Going back to the computer, we can see the survey scan rastering over that area at 5000x will now be representative of an average of all of those materials. We see our low energy gold peak. We see oxygen. 
we see tantalum, all of the elements present individually, we see present as an average, but at lower signals. Again, I just wanted to demonstrate what would happen both on the computer screen and on the TV when we rastered over an area or did a full area analysis. Going back to the TV, again, we see the area at which we are acquiring the data. Since we essentially have one area, it will go 19 cycles or 10 minutes to complete this acquisition. Or I can abort the acquisition by using soft key number eight. When I do that, we'll see what happens to the TV image. Once we abort or the acquisition is completed, automatically we will come back to the original magnification of 5000X.